Hey, good evening, everybody. How's everybody doing out there? I can't believe we're already uh, at another Thursday evening. And so it's so good to be with everybody and see everybody tonight. As you're joining in and, and connecting, go ahead and give a shout out. Let us know that you're out there. It's always good for us to see whose brothers and sisters are joined together in prayer, in our prayer circle, which is pretty wide as we spread across these, these great technology ways that we have that God has provided for us so that we can come together and share. And, uh, and so give us a shout out. It's good to see everybody out there. Verna, it's so good to see you. Seeing great pictures of the, of the restaurant and people enjoying a great meal outside underneath those umbrellas. I bet you never thought you'd be doing that. So God certainly does stretch us pretty far, doesn't he? Hi, Sherry, how are you? Didn't get to see you today at the food pantry. We had such a busy day at the church today. My goodness. Uh, we had a Red Cross blood drive, which is, uh, in, they're in desperate need this, these, during these days. Um, <clears throat> but we still had a very good turnout. So if you were one of the people who came out and, and uh, who was able to, to donate blood today, we thank you so much for that. Uh, I think we had over 25 units which is a, a great, great thing. And so thank you for everyone who was able to, to donate and to give. And, uh, and I said uh, also earlier today that if you were unable to give or you weren't able to, to check in, um, still, we need your prayers. Uh, pray for those who gave and pray for those who need, uh, especially during this time. So, um, but we, we do greatly appreciate all who were able to come out to the Red Cross Blood Drive today at the church. Carol, good evening. It's so good to see you. Thank you for all you're doing in our food closet, uh, helping to feed the people who are in need in our community, in our neighborhood. It's a great way for us to connect. Uh, if all of us who have just a little bit extra in our pantries come together, we can fill someone else's pantry who's in need. So thank you so much for all that you do. Hi, Jenny. How see that you're back home from vacation. I hope you had a great vacation. Got to see some pictures of what was happening down there in Ocean City. Looked a little, little crowded there on the boardwalk, but I hope when you were out and about, you're wearing your masks and, and practicing your, your safe distances. Uh, and I hope you got lots of rest and, and got rejuvenated. So it's good to see you guys. Lisa, how are you? I didn't get to see you last weekend um, over there at the Hope Center. So uh, miss seeing you. Maybe I'll catch you this weekend. Uh, so welcome this evening. Welcome this evening. Hi Donna, thanks so much for joining us and thank you for your continued support of our praise team. Uh, Donna is one of our tried and true praise team members and she's been coming out during this whole uh, pandemic that we've been having and, and helping the team uh, lead all of you in worship on, on Sunday morning. And so thank you. We really, really appreciate that. Hey Jen, how are you? Congratulations, an eighth grader. That's, that's amazing. Moving into high school. Uh, now all the great fun really begins to happen. High school is an interesting time. You know that. So, so good to have you with us tonight. Angela, again, another one of our praise team members. Thank you so much for joining in tonight and gathering together in prayer. Thank you so much for giving us your gift that God has given to you in that beautiful voice uh, and helping us to lead. Again, tonight, if you're just catching in, go ahead and let us know that you're here. Um, go ahead and click on Have a Watch Party. Uh, that would be great. That's a way to make our, our circle in our prayer time even larger. So go ahead and do that as well. Hey, don't forget, um, also while you are here on Facebook, go ahead and, and click that you want to share and like and all those things. And then, uh, not now, but sometime maybe later after our prayer time or um, before Sunday is go on to our YouTube channel for First UMC Millville. All of our videos are there from the prayer time and as well as for uh, Sunday worship and click on subscribe and then you'll get the notifications. You go up into the upper right hand corner on that YouTube page. There's a, there's a little uh, picture, an icon. It looks like a bell sort of looking thing. It looks like a bell. You click on that and then it'll ask you if you want to get notifications and that's great because then it'll send you the notifications when we go live from first UMC. And so uh, you would know uh, right away when that is happening. It's so good to have all of you with us here tonight. Um, and know if you have any additional prayer requests other than you know what we're uh, coming together tonight to do, don't forget to send those into prayer list at first UMC Millville. 
and we'll get you on the prayer list and our prayer warriors will be will be fervently praying for you your concerns and those who are on your hearts and your minds our prayer warriors are still meeting uh, they still gather together on wednesday night uh, via technology and and also throughout the week individually they are they're keeping everyone in prayer hi mary oh it's so good to see you i hope you are doing well uh, it's good to have you joining with us boy i miss you guys and i hope all, everything is well with you and the family so hi alvina how are you doing this evening i hope you're getting through this uh pandemic well i know it's difficult being trapped at home boy um but uh gotta keep everyone safe and so please everyone continue to follow the safety guidelines even though some people aren't uh, i care about each and every one of you and so i want you to be as safe as possible so when you go out wear your mask keep your social distancing keep washing those hands we should be washing those hands anyhow because the flu is everywhere, but um, especially now, keep washing your hands, keep a little bottle of hand sanitizer in your car, uh, in and out, as soon as you get in, as soon as you get out, put that hand sanitizer on and, and, and keep after it. We want you all to be safe, to be very safe. Um, it's, been a, it's been a crazy week. Uh, we've been talking about um, <clears throat> continuing with the worship online, and what that means, what it looks like. We're trying to do our best to do to deliver to you and to, to lead you in giving worship to praise, at worship and praise to God on Sunday morning. Uh, I am very proud of all of our worship teams and everybody behind the scenes. There's people behind the scenes that you don't you don't see on Sunday who are doing a lot of work, and so I want to thank them all and give them a big shout out. But we're also trying to start thinking about what it's going to look like when we when we are able to come back in person and and what those stages will be looking like and our reopening team um, from our ministry of council is meeting they're going over the cdc guidelines they're going over the guidelines that are coming from the state of new jersey as well as our local uh, health officials and so they're going to be pouring over those and putting together a plan uh, first and foremost is to be safe uh, obviously and and also to be able to still worship uh, together. Right now things are a little strange in the way people are getting together and um, and very limited. So, um, But they are working on that. But that, that just leads me to be thinking about how throughout this week it, so many things have been changed, so many things have been different. Somebody even said to me, you know, no one has ever pastored through anything like this so you really can't lose because <laughs> there's nothing to compare it to. Uh, in 2,000 years no one's pa pastored through a pandemic that that closed our church buildings and so pastor Jack and I have been you know prayerfully and and with lots of discernment uh, thinking about each and every step as we move forward and that that all can be very overwhelming and I know for some of us all of this is overwhelming it's just so so different for all of us in the way that we're living our lives and the things that we have to do but we have to remember that God promises us he makes promises to us and he promises to us that he will always bring us to a point of restoration and redemption. In the Gospel of Matthew in chapter 11, he says, Come to me, all of you who are weary and carry heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. And so when, you're over, when you are feeling too much stress and you are feeling overwhelmed, and it's not just the pandemic right now. Our world is in a lot of stress and turmoil. Uh, there's race division that's happening, that, that has been happening, and that's coming to a head there's there's people that are using that for good and there's people that are using that for bad and it, it can become too much for us to handle and even think about and it can feel like too much pressure in philippians chapter 4 god gives us a very specific promise he promises us peace it says be careful for nothing but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving let your requests be made known to god and the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. And then the psalmist, in chapter 142, he says, When my spirit was overwhelmed within me, you knew my path. That God knows the path before us. So again, as you're, as you're just checking in and clicking in, make sure you go ahead and comment out there and let us know that you're here with us so that we know who is who is joining together in this prayer circle. I'm reflecting on this feeling that I've had this week of being somewhat overwhelmed by learning something new and planning for something that we've never planned before and 
and moving forward. And I've heard from several of you who have said it's just, it all seems to be too much at, at times. And I know some people are starting to feel pressure about the fall season and we haven't even entered summer yet. And we're getting worried about what's going to happen in the fall in three months or what's going to happen at Christmas or what's going to happen at New Year's. And, and we just take on so much. And this feeling of being overwhelmed is, comes from a loss feeling of a loss of control over our own circumstances. But now we've gathered together here on a nice evening. You know, it's about nine o'clock at night and some of us are starting to settle in. And I'm thinking instead of being overwhelmed by our lack of control or our circumstances or the things that are happening in the world or the media or the to-do list that we didn't get finished today that's going to be even longer tomorrow, what if we were overwhelmed by something else? What if we were overwhelmed by an amazing God? What if we refocused our overwhelmness, if you will, instead of being on our current circumstances in the world, but being overwhelmed by, by God and, and how amazing and, and awesome God truly is? And we focused on God who created the universe, God who created the stars. If you look out your window right now, you're gonna see you're gonna see stars in the sky. And to think that the God who created all of that created you and loves you, loves you specifically. That's a feeling that can overwhelm us, but also put a smile on our face. How many of you out there are, are feeling a little bit of a smile coming over your face? To think about how overwhelming it is for the, the one who created the entire universe to have created you and loves you so deeply. In Romans chapter 8, it says, For to set the mind on the flesh is death, but to set the mind on the spirit is life and peace. If we set our minds on things, that's, that's where we get focused. That's where our, our, our thoughts go. That's where our emotions go. That's, that's what drives our, our next steps. You know, speaking of, of, of driving, my, my children were just reflecting the other day about a funny story where their grandparents told them that when they drive over a bridge, going onto one of the islands at the shore, when they drive over a bridge, they should roll all the windows down. In case the bridge should collapse and their car falls in the water, then they can get out. And my children laugh and they chuckle about this because when they drive over a bridge, they don't think it's gonna collapse. Subconsciously, when they come to a bridge and they're driving, they trust in the bridge. They're not overwhelmed by the possibility of it crashing, they're, they're concentrating on other things because their mind was already focused on, on trusting that the engineers and the contractors and, and all those built the bridge and the bridge isn't going, to, isn't going to go anywhere. I mean, when we train our minds to do that, to trust, then it becomes second nature. It becomes what you and I might call, you know, not conscious, but subconsciously. Well, subconsciously, we don't need to be overwhelmed by the circumstances that are in our life because we can train ourselves to trust in God. And that trust in God then becomes part of our lives. And instead of being overwhelmed by all the things that are making us down, we can be overwhelmed by the things that lift us up, the grace of God and how much he loves us. In Psalms chapter 9, it says, And those who know your name put their trust in you, for you, O oh Lord, have not forsaken those who seek you. Psalm 56 says, When I am afraid, I put my trust in you. In God, whose word I praise, in God I trust, I shall not be afraid. What can flesh do to me? And then, of course, probably the one that you all have heard, or you probably can recite it or move your lips as I'm saying it too, Proverbs 3, Trust in the Lord with all your heart. And do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him, and he will make your paths straight. You know, there are days, especially now, when things just seem so different that I can let my guard down and become almost terrified or worried 
or filled with anxiety. Or I can allow myself to become overwhelmed by the mystery. This is nothing new for God. God's got this. This is new for us. But God's got this. God can handle this. And God will direct it. And we can be overwhelmed by the way God is using it. The way God is using this time to bring families together. The way God is using this for, for our church to grow. It, in our church, maybe a couple hundred people on a Sunday morning. But now we have four, five, six, seven hundred people watching First Church worship and praise the Lord. God's got this. And we can be truly amazed at the mystery of it all. We can know that the one who created the stars of this universe created you. So when you're starting to feel overwhelmed, and perhaps today was that day that you were feeling overwhelmed, you can make a choice. You can either turn away from God, you can start concentrating on all the things that could go wrong or what's going to happen or I don't know what's going to happen and all those things can be rushing through your head. Or you can turn to God and trust in Him. We can believe that God is in control. And just like when you drive over a bridge, you believe. And every step you take in your life today, tomorrow, and, and everything that's happening in the world, that God is in control. He's got this. He's got this. Through all the chaos and the confusion and, and all of those crazy things, we can experience God. And I think the one funny thing about that is, is that God will then use that for you individually to grow deeper in your relationship with Him and He with you. Because God is a Redeemer. God is always searching for you. And God is always trying to restore your relationship with Him. And He's going to use everything He possibly can to do that. And so when we turn to Him, He says, Yes, thank you. Bring it on. Bring it on. And together we'll get through this. Because you know, when we choose to trust in God through the unknown, the Bible says that's joy. That's joy. Joy in, in knowing that we're not dependent upon the world and our circumstances. We're depending upon the Holy Spirit. And we're trusting that the Holy Spirit will, will get us over the bridge. Every time. There's a saying that says, if you're praying about it, God's working on it. I love that saying. If you're praying about it, God's working on it. And so tonight we've come together to, to pray. We've come together to wrap virtual arms around and lock elbow to elbow with brothers and sisters in Christ and to pray together. There's a song that I love. That, uh, it's a contemporary praise song and it, it goes a little fast, so um, it may not be for, for everyone's particular likes. But I'd like you to hear the words. It's called Greater by Mercy Me, and it says, Bring your tired, bring your shame, bring your guilt, and bring your pain. Don't you know that's not your name? You will always be much more to me. Every day I wrestle with the voices that keep telling me I'm not right. But that's not all right. Because I hear a voice, and he calls me redeemed. I read the other day that someone said if you're trying to make your life happy based upon what other people think of you, you're never going to be happy. And I thought, you know, the opposite of that is true too. If everyone around you loves you, you're still not going to be happy until you're right with God. Their song con con uh, continues, it says, when others say I'll never be enough. Greater is the one living inside of me than he who is living in the world. And greater is the one living inside of me than he who is living in the world. So, bring your doubts, bring your fears, bring your hurt, and bring your tears. You are holy, righteous, and redeemed.
So brothers and sisters, grab, grab those people who are around you. Grab a hand next to you. Even reach out and know that we're all grabbing hands virtually across these great waves. And Let's go to the Lord in a word of prayer this evening. Gracious and Heavenly Father, there are times in our lives, especially now, when things are just so out of kilter, so out of tilt, so, so foreign to us, Lord. Just seeing our friends and family and even strangers in places with, with masks and standing away from each other and not being able to shake hands or touch, it's just, it, it really weighs heavy on us, Lord, because we are creatures that want to connect and build relationships and, and, and we want to be in situations where we can uh, learn more about one another and that we can dig deeper together and, and we do all that with connection and this just seems so strange and foreign to us, Lord. And Father, when we're not able to do this, it seems and appears that the violence is on its rise. It, it appears that division is on its rise. It appears words of hatred and thoughts of violence are on the rise, Lord. And Lord, some days we're so overwhelmed, we don't even know what to pray. So God, help us. Put words in our mouth so that we can speak to you. That great saying that says when we're praying about it, you're working on it. Well, some days, Lord, we're, we're virtually speechless for the way our, our world is today, Lord. So when we're at a loss for words and when we are having difficulty in what to pray, help us to trust that you know what's on our hearts. You know what is weighing us. You know what has taken away our smiles and turned them into friends. So Father, we lift up all the things that are weighing on our hearts this evening. We lift up the people and we lift up the circumstances. Lord, we lift up ourselves when when we begin to feel overwhelmed, when when we allow our minds to be focused on chaos and confusion rather than to be focused on the mystery that it is in being a son or a daughter of yours. Lord, remind us of the promises that you've made and help us to remember how each and every promise you've made you fulfilled. Remind us of the past when, when we've lifted prayers to you and, and they've been answered either by the way we wanted them to be answered or, or in the way that you wanted them to be answered and that you used all things for your good, Lord. Father, right now, we've gathered together to pray to you. And so, Lord, I, I ask that you hear each and every one of the people who are here in this place. We're gathered in this space, if you will, Lord. We, we call it the cloud, Lord, but you know that we don't need to be physically connected in order to be spiritually connected. And so each one of us now prays for our sister and brother to our right and to our left. We pray for their circumstance. We pray that you would lift their burden. We pray that whatever stress they're feeling would be lifted. We pray that if today was a day filled with joy, that they would carry that into the next and that they would spread that to those around them, Lord. And, and as their cup is overflowing, it would begin to fill ours. Gracious and Holy Spirit, be our comforter be our supporter, be our strength, and be our shield. To the Holy One, help us. Help us to overcome all that the enemy has been trying to throw our way. Help us to defend you in ways that are only through love. And the best way is to be your example. And Lord, as we continue to reach out and seek out and we continue to do your ways in our lives, help us to not do 
more than depend upon you. For there is nothing we can do on our own. And we don't want our pride to get into the way, Lord. So Lord, help us to find great joy. Help us to become overwhelmed in your love and in your grace and in your mercy. Fill us with your presence. Fill us with your presence that gives us a great sense of peace. Lord, we thank you. We thank you for loving us. We thank you for, for never leaving us. We thank you for today and the, all the opportunities you gave us to be your hands and feet, to be your example, to be your face in this world. Forgive us for those that we've missed and allow us to try again tomorrow. Father, we thank you for the rest of this evening. We thank you that our shoulders are beginning to feel lighter, that our backs feel stronger, and that there's a little bit of a smile on our face. We can feel the warmth of your smile upon us. We can feel your hands upon our shoulders. We can feel your breath upon our necks. And we know that you are with us. Father, we thank you. We love you deeply. Lord, we love our brothers and sisters gathered here in our families, in our workplaces, in our neighborhoods, in our church, Lord, in our city, and in the world. We love each and every one just as much as you do. Father, thank you. Thank you for my brothers and sisters who have gathered here, who have lifted me up, who have chased away the feeling of chaos and confusion, and have filled it with a sense of peace and trust. For you are the Holy Redeemer, the relationship builder, the one who loves us. Father and Spirit and Son, in your most precious names we pray, and all God's people say, Amen. Amen. Brothers and sisters, thank you so much for inviting me into your spaces. It truly is humbling to be able to be be with you wherever you are. I know some of you are far, far away and, and you're in different places. I see Tina's with us this evening. I think she's still on vacation. So Tina, thank you for joining with us and I hope you're getting a lot of rest, getting to see family and friends you haven't seen in a while. Just remember that we at First Church, we love you deeply. If you have any concerns or if you have any needs, please do reach out to us. And again, if you're if you're ready to be out and about and you want to help, let us know. If you can pick up a couple of extra food items, non-perishables, and drop them off at the church, that certainly would help fill our food pantry, so that our food closet, so that we can continue to help those around us. If you have an interest in making food, maybe putting a sandwich tray together, or or helping us make some food as we begin as we continue to to serve those who don't have a home or a dining room table to sit at. We have those opportunities at the Hope Center over at the Trinity Building. We're just concerned about all of you. We want you to know that we love you and, and God loves you. And so again, I thank you all for being here. Don't forget to join one of our small groups, but also to check back in on Sunday for our worship service. And make sure you click all, all the things you need to click on social media so that we can continue to spread God's word. We love all of you, and if there's anything we can do, please do reach out. And it's running a little late now, but maybe tomorrow morning before lunch, call a friend, call someone and just tell them, I've been praying for you and I just wanted you to know that, as I now am praying for all of you.
as you've checked in and told me you're here, know that I'm praying for each and every one of you as well. Have a good night and we'll, we'll see you real soon. Love you deeply. God bless.